The dinosaurs are dead and have been for a little bit of time. The last non-avian dinosaur to be discovered was a Triceratops, dated at right around 66 million years ago. In the modern day, it's commonly understood that 66 million years ago, a giant meteorite crashed into the Earth's surface, signaling the end of the age of not just dinosaurs, but a wide array of unique organisms that flourished during the Mesozoic. While proposed in 1980 due to high levels of a rare metal called iridium being found in rock later separating the Mesozoic from the Cenozoic, it would be 10 years later until a corresponding crater would be identified, the Chicks Club Crater in the Yucatan Peninsula. But what about before then? From the time the first dinosaurs were identified, it had been somewhat clear that we no longer live among them. And the question that has been asked since is, why? Throughout the long history of dinosaur paleontology, the general perception of the clade has morphed from reptilian to eventually avian forms, constantly shaping our views of how these animals looked and behaved. In their most reptilian representation, they were seen as slow and stupid, basing it off of the common perception of reptiles at the time. Orthogenetic thought or the belief that evolution worked in a straight line, was how many naturalists saw evolution at the time. So it was inevitable that the dinosaurs would evolve to grow dumber and slower, while the predestined mammals grew more nimble and intelligent. This, however, is not how evolution works. There's no predetermined path, just a series of adaptive modifications in response to a species' environment. This thinking would define our modern depiction of evolution and end the hypothesis that the dinosaurs simply killed themselves. It was clear a specific event had to have ended the Mesozoic. So what then could it have been? Flowers are about as ubiquitous with nature today as the trees, the grass, and endless swarms of mosquitoes. Yet compared to the other staples of nature, Except for mosquitoes. Flowering plants are fairly new, coming into existence in the early Cretaceous. Along with these new plants would come new animals to graze upon them, one of which would be proposed to cause the end of the age of dinosaurs. Stanley Flanders would propose this theory in the 1960s, owing in part to his profession as an entomologist. In his hypothesis, the exploding population of caterpillars and other herbivorous insects would consume more and more foliage, stripping herbivorous dinosaurs of their source of food, leading to a massive chain of events that, according to Flanders, might have ended the age of dinosaurs. Now, it is true that large swarms of insects can and still do cause mass famines. Yet a famine on a global level, snowballing into the almost complete extinction of an entire clade of animals is, uh, absurd. Not to mention, this wouldn't account for the many other animals that went extinct at the same time as the dinosaurs, such as various marine and flying reptiles. Caterpillars simply wouldn't cut it. The true cause would have to be much grander, much larger. It's shortly after this where the extraterrestrial option was suggested. Uh, no, 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 not that kind of extraterrestrial, though. Not yet. The traditional meteor theory would be developed, and a crater eventually found. An open and shut case. Besides one last thing. The dinosaurs have been dying off before then. During the late Cretaceous leading into the KT extinction event, species diversification was plummeting. While it's possible that this is due to the fossil record being inherently incomplete, it's also possible that something else was eating away at the dinosaurs shortly before the KT extinction. Enter the Deccan Traps. Traps are a plateau of igneous rock formed by past volcanic activity, with the largest of these being the Siberian Traps a scar reaching across a wide section of Siberia, commemorating the Great Dying, the most catastrophic extinction event life on Earth experience. Come to find out, there's another series of traps in northern India, 
known as the Deccan Traps, that are dated to shortly before to shortly after the KT extinction. A possible smoking gun, yet likely one that worked in tandem with sea levels falling, global climate change, and, of course, the asteroid. Unless you take into account the Vernshot hypothesis. Named after author Jules Verne, the hypothesis asserts that a gigantic amount of volcanic material shot up past the Earth's atmosphere, then came plummeting down back to Earth, which caused both the extinction of the dinosaurs and the craters it left. As expected, though, it's not really a theory many take seriously. And like that, uh, we come to the end of our list of possible... Uh, Wait. One second, there's one more. Uh, you've gotta be... You've gotta be fun. Aliens killed the dinosaurs. That's right. The iridium found throughout the globe? It's a byproduct of alien nuclear bombs that eradicated the dinosaurs. But why? Why would they do such a thing? Well, to make way for their newest experiment. Us. You see, humans have lived alongside dinosaurs for millennia, as shown by these indisputable 100% not debunked pieces of evidence. But dinosaurs, in their hubris, were messing with the grand plans of our overlord aliens, and they were systematically eliminated as a result. As many ancient astronaut theorists speculate. I know what you're thinking. Yes, this is just creationism with aliens and nukes. But to be completely fair, so is all of ancient astronaut thought. So, you know, at least it's consistent. It goes without saying, but I... Yeah, this is all bullshit. Most evidence to assert that humans and dinosaurs coexisted are without a doubt false, with everything else having much more reasonable explanations than aliens wanted to play real-life sport. The dinosaurs are dead. At least all the cool non avian dinosaurs are. And the only thing left to answer is, what killed them? The asteroid did. <laughs> 